apples and oranges. Both fruit, but only one has to be peeled. Star Wars and Star Trek. Ooh, okay, both space epics, one mostly TV, the other mostly cinema. Hello and good day. Oh, easy. One is how awesome people greet each other, and the other is hello. I walked right into that. Comparison is a skill. Now, admittedly, comparison in general gets a bad rap. Time spent worrying about how other people look or how much they have is not exactly healthy. But like a knife, this tool can be useful if you know how to use it. So let's cut to the chase. The fact is, comparing things and events in our lives, for better or for worse, is something most humans do before we know we're doing it. When I was four years old, I used the skill of comparison by contemplating the intricacies of square things and round things. Both shapes, yes, but one was edgy and the other curvy. What did it all mean? Well, despite a lifetime of practice comparing things, historical comparison isn't a walk in the park. It's more like a marathon you train for. You practice, you get faster each time you try, until you're finally ready for the big race. Historical comparison is more than a Venn diagram or T-chart. Ultimately, our goal is to have students identify and describe relevant similarities and differences between two historical topics, and then stretch their thinking even further by explaining the significance of their findings. So, that's the concept of comparison in a nutshell. And guess what? We even have a tool that'll help you introduce and reinforce this skill with your students. Now, they may scoff at being given a fancy schmancy worksheet, thinking it's just to list similarities and differences. Don't worry. Once they realise how much deeper we're going, there won't be time for scoffing. In order to set students up to use the comparison tool, start by deciding what they're going to compare. History is multidimensional, and there's no end to all the events, populations or times we could compare. Fear not. By kicking off with more straightforward comparisons and building in complexity, your students won't feel overwhelmed as they gain more practice using their historical comparison skills. Now, here's something to consider. Will you have students compare two different groups at the same time in history? Or perhaps their analysis will be of the same location but at different times? Or similar events in different times and different locations? The possibilities are endless. After you've chosen your topic of comparison, students will write in the cases they are comparing and note their time period and location. For example, our introductory comparison activity in the course has students compare the world today to the world in 1750. It's a straightforward comparison that will set them up for more complex examples to come later in the course. Students will consider both cases, through readings as well as their own background knowledge, and list out defining features of both topics using the lenses of three frames, communities, production and distribution, and networks. Next, discuss the following questions with your students. How are these cases similar? How are they different? What's important about those similarities and differences? Then, ask them to write their responses into the similarities and differences rows of the worksheet. Eventually, they'll do this step on their own and won't need your guidance. A significant part of the comparison tool is that students use frames first to make sense of each case they're comparing. Only after that do they actually list the similarities and differences. So, for example, you're not just having students list, say, characteristics of life in 1750 and now and calling it a day. They're summarising the information they've read, analysing it through the lenses of community, networks and production and distribution, and then synthesising everything they've read to grapple with similarities and differences. It's a lot, but we're almost to the finish line, we promise. The last section of the tool is where students take all the great information they've gathered and add another level of understanding. We're leaving the kiddie pool and we're venturing to the deep end. Students finish this exercise by writing two thesis statements from the comparison they have already conducted. Yes, thesis statements terrify some students, but this is when you get to tell them 
they've actually done most of the work already, so it's not such a scary leap. And eventually, with practice using this tool, your students will move on from thesis sentences to whole paragraphs, all the way to comparison essays. It's hard work, but rewarding for students and teachers alike. The comparison tool, as you can already tell, is highly customizable and can be scaffolded easily throughout any course. Getting a solid grasp of comparison is really important before you move on to even more challenging historical thinking skills, like continuity and change over time. More on that later. It's been said that comparison is the thief of joy. And when it comes to social media selfies altered to look perfect, that is absolutely true. But with history, I say this comparison tool is the bringer of all joy. That's pretty nerdy. Is that really where all joy comes from? Of course not. I also love claim testing, contextualization, three close reads, causation. 